through this. So glycogen, glycogen is what we call stored sugar. And if you've read the book any way you can, I spend a very detailed amount saying, this is what happens when you go with zero food. And you'll see that uh, phase two has um, um, between eight and 16 hours that you use glucose for storage. But that is much different in Stacy and much different in, um, in uh, Jerry as they hang out in this ketogenic phase. Uh, their body uses a whole bunch of stored glucose and they really stayed in phase two. Um, I would contend that Jerry stayed there for a better part of two months um, before he really was in phase three and now um, his, his glycogen is much lower. So let's just take a look at what happens with glycogen. In my, pra in my little <laughs> teaching, I use these squares to tell you that we're talking about glucose. I color them red, and then if you put them in a bundle, in a little vacuole, that's what I think glycogen looks like. The first place your body puts glycogen is inside the liver, and those liver storages are there to feed the body as quickly as possible when sugars get low. When you get shaky, uh, your body is looking to say, hey, give me some of the stored glycogen. Uh, it can only do that when your insulin has dropped. So if I'm in charge of your insulin, if I'm poking uh, and putting insulin in you, you're not gonna empty out that glycogen very well. It's gonna get stored, and that's where my diabetics end up with years and years of elevated glycogen storage, and then they ha have a really big liver because I've chemically made it impossible for them to empty their liver and the improvement in, um, uh, in a liver starts with that insulin going down. So Stacy didn't know it, but her, it, her liver was in a very um, dangerous tipping point for storing sugar as opposed to just using it as this little pocket of area for sugar and then launching it off to the rest of her system. Uh, you look at those little blue circles floating through there, those are ketones. So that says, yes, you're in a ketogenic state or you have added ketones in a can. And just like Stacy, these ketones in a can are not meant for long term. They are meant to help your body's metabolism flip to a, keto, a, a nutritional ketosis and then be able to stay there using uh, the supplement only when you feel like you've fallen off the wagon or you need a little help. But that would be what it looks like when I check my ketones and I have glucose in my circulation. You will always have glucose and some ketones. Now, as you practice a state of uh, ketosis, those glycogen storage is empty. And this is what Stacy was not able to do without a little help. Her body had so much insulin in her system that she could not empty, empty the glycogen storage. And one of the ways that we know that that was happening is that she'd get very shaky and she would crave foods. Uh, those are two signals that insulin's high, sugar's on the drop, and the insulin has to drop in order for me to use that glucose that's in storage. She was struggling with that. Why? Because she'd had high insulin for months to years. And despite having that intense exercise schedule, she really struggled with the ability to, um, to use the storage because her insulin blocked, chemically blocked the ability for her to tap into those, those molecules. So here's another look. Um, you not only store that glucose in your liver, you will also store glucose in the form of glycogen in your muscles. You'll talk about people saying, I carb up before the big basketball game. Uh, what they're talking about is making sure that the glycogen storages are in the muscles so the muscle has very quick access uh, to that sugar. I would contend that if you have smarter muscles, we would also uh, get them adapted to using ketones so you can use both of them. So if this is muscles, we have muscles everywhere in our body from our throat to our fingers to our back to our head, and all of those muscle cells are going to store glucose in the form of glycogen. But if you're in a ketogenic state and the insulin is low enough, you will find that you're emptying some of those glycogen. When Stacy would go to the gym and she'd get really good ketones after she went to the gym, it's because her insulin finally dropped with this intense workout schedule that she could empty some of the muscle glycogen and that lower insulin also allowed her body to produce ketones. This was just happening in very few pockets, so it was difficult for her to ever get to a threshold where her system was ready to use a ketone at any minute.
That's what the two weeks of ketones in a can had done. Uh, that allowed her, now once you've turned on that uh, receptor, once you've turned on that process, it doesn't go to sleep if you don't use it for a day. It takes many days of not using ketones before you start to go backwards in this process. Of course, the other way that you can get there is fasting. When fasting, the insulin plummets. If you do a strict fast, you're gonna empty up all the storages that come out of that glucose, uh, out of those muscles, and all the glycogen that was stored in uh, the, the liver as well. If you flip back, or if you go to the chart that's in my book, um, you'll find that, that phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, is 40 days of fasting. And that is really um, where that data becomes powerful. Um, you look at these glucose uh, that if you see what was about to happen to Stacy, and unfortunately what really has happened to Jerry for 20 years is his sugars didn't get controlled. And when the sugars get higher and higher and the body filled up all of his liver and then it filled up all of his muscles with that glycogen those fats trickling in his, in his uh, circulation are called triglycerides. And if you wanna know the cholesterol that matters the most when I look at a patient, it is what is their triglyceride number? Because triglycerides come directly from how much sugar couldn't find a storage space. And if your liver is plum full of stored sugar and your muscles are plum full of stored sugars, that's when triglycerides start to shoot up. So we see those little, you'll see those three little, uh, they look like uh, ropes. Um, so I drew them like this. They're kind of goofy looking, but I tried to give them a little bit of a character because they're, they're very dense areas of fuel. Uh, those strings of fat, those yellow strings of fat, there's three of them, and they're held together by a few glucose molecules. I just put one of them in this picture, but uh, I want you to see there's glucose in a triglyceride, and when you break out the fats to use that triglyceride, you're gonna find some glucose available. But when the body says, I cannot find any storage space for all this sugar, it turns it into fat. Now you have a problem, because the only way you can get rid of that triglyceride or that fat is to metabolize it through a ketone. So if you've got high insulin like Stacy did, you're gonna have these ketones that are 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.2. And she's like, I don't understand. How do these people make so many ketones? I'm like, you're me the, mechan the mechanics inside that mitochondria is used to all sugar. And it takes a few tools to use that ketone. It also requires that the insulin is lower. And I tell Stacy, let me biohack this for you. Put the ketones in for two weeks, get your mitochondria ready, and you are gonna find a much easier journey once I get the metabolism started. So again, here's glucose in the blood. And this way you can see over on the side, ketones or, or triglycerides floating in that bloodstream. The first thing that happens with high triglycerides and high sugars is we fill up the glucose in the liver called, and we make glycogen. The second thing, uh, that happens is, what happens next is fat in the blood. And that's what those little strings are. They get more and more. We don't have any more room to store sugar if, unless we make a few liver cells. And the body does do that. It has a high insulin state. The insulin is a growth factor. So not only do you grow skin tags with high insulin, not only do you grow acne, but you grow more liver cells when you have high insulin. And the reason why is we're looking for more places to store that sugar. As, that, uh, as those fats float along into the system, they start to say, we need to package this somewhere. And those packages go into the liver. And at first, it's just a few triglycerides that are stored in the liver. But before long, those triglycerides become uh, what we call fatty liver disease. And I can remember the, uh, during gross anatomy when, in medical school, when you would see the liver that was this yellowy, fatty, uh, organ. Uh, it was because it was so filled with triglycerides that it, was, it wasn't pink, it wasn't red, it was yellow. It was truly filled with fat. And that is the number one reason that we do liver transplants today is a fatty liver that can't be um, that can't be rescued. I know Jerry has a fatty liver, but I am confident that Stacy was headed for one if we didn't lower her insulin. Uh, and again, the only symptom she had to lower her insulin was she had acne, she had some brain fog, and she had some cravings. 
that's just sinful. That's the, the only thing her symptom was, or her body was telling her were those sim little bitty signs of inflammation. Her blood sugars were normal. That's, that's the danger actually. So here we go at the onset of a ketogenic diet. There's our little ketone blue circles floating through there. You're still gonna have glucose and she's got some of those fatty triglycerides. Uh, but as we watch what happens, we'll empty the glycogen first. And that's really where I think Stacy is probably at a good phase where she's emptied out a bunch of her glycogen. I know Jerry has, but you see the abundant am amounts of ketones that he can make. And I know that his liver used to be filled with so much more triglycerides uh, that he has been turning into ketones. The only way you can get a triglyceride, that fat of a triglyceride out of a human body, you cannot turn it back into sugar. You get a few molecules of sugar when you break the chains apart, but to use those chains as energy, you have to turn them into ketones to get them out of our body. So that looks like, um, Again, ketones uh, are how you do that. So you saw this filled with ketones. How did Jerry get such high ketones in his circulation? He's been using those stored triglycerides in his liver, and that's how you reverse a fatty liver. Um, and it happens only after we get the glycogen storage emptied, and um, uh, he stays in a strong ketogenic uh, uh, state. Uh, just to make sure you see this, if you look at glycogen uh, uh, storage, filling up that uh, system, this is really where um, where uh, Stacy was when she came to us in September. Uh, she had a lot of, uh, of stored glycogen, and when getting her body into a ketogenic state and, and emptying some of that liver, it happens only when I could lower her insulin. So at first, we weren't doing that. She was still eating too often. Even though they were really good ketogenic states, this is what was too high, is her insulin was on fire. And to put that insulin out, it means ketones need to be around. This is a great signaling agent, and that is ketones in a can, a signaling agent to put the flames out of her metabolic state. Uh, it, it did take me delivering it to her doorstep and saying, just let me use this. You're going to activate your mitochondria. This is taking very long, and I'm sorry that it's taking so long, but that insulin uh, is winning. You ha your body makes a lot of insulin, which is probably why there was early heart disease in her family. That's so what insulin should look like. I know I demonize insulin, but he should not be so inflamed. You should have a low number of that. And there go our, our heroes, the ketone bodies. <laughs> All right. Please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.